Hi there, welcome everybody, and um, thank you for joining this APMG webinar uh, on unlocking PMO potential with our friends at House of PMO. My name's Mark Constable. I'll be your host and moderator for the session, and it's a pleasure to be joined by guest presenter Lindsay Scott from House of PMO. Um, and Lindsay will be taking us through some some best practices for self assessment for PMO professionals using the House of PMO's PMO competency framework as a, as the underpinning guidance. Um, but just before we get into that content, uh, bear with me while I cover a few bits of housekeeping. So the first point to note is we are recording the session and everyone that's registered will receive a follow up email from us over the course of the next couple of days once we've got the recording online. Um, uh, secondly, you're welcome to submit questions at any point throughout the webinar. Um, so you will notice there's a Q&A uh, function within your Zoom window. Um, but you may also notice there's a chat area as well. And both of those are, are open to everyone. Uh, and I know Lindsay loves a bit of interaction on these types of events, so so do get your chat messages and uh, and your questions coming in, and hopefully we'll address as many of those questions as we can uh, throughout. Uh, last but not least, your feedback is very important to us when it comes to uh, planning and delivering webinars in the future. So uh, you'll have my email address for um, the registration confirmation emails, the reminder emails, and also the follow-up email that's due over the next couple of days. Uh, so if you do have any feedback that you wish to share on any aspect, do send that through to me. That's always very helpful. Um, so I think that's it from me. So without further ado, I will hand things over to Lindsay to get us started on the main content. All yours, Lindsay. Hello, everyone. This is the uh, House of PMO and APMG session on unlocking, unlocking PMO potential, a guide to self-assessments for PMO professionals. For anyone who is not aware, the House of PMO is a professional body for people that are working within PMO. And we have a certain book, which is the PMO competency framework. And today's session is going to be all about this book and how you can use it to unlock your potential. Um, so we'll be referencing it throughout this session. And just to let you know that the PMO competency framework is actually one of the core texts for the essentials for PMO managers, of which APMG International is the accrediting body for that. Um, so that's why we're here today talking to you about PMOs doing an assessment, um, and we'll also tell you a little bit more about those qualifications as we go through. So what we're going to be covering today is... A little bit more about what people actually get out of a self-assessment and why it's important for people that are working in any profession, but obviously specifically today we're talking about people that are working within PMO. We're going to talk about why the and how the PMO self-assessment will work for you. So we're going to go into some detail around um, how it actually all hangs together and the thinking all behind it. Um, we will be talking about where you actually put most of your energy into doing a self-assessment. And then we'll just do a quick look at what it actually looks like and when you want to do an assessment yourself. So let's get started. So what do people actually get out of doing a, a self-assessment? Well, let's just start right at the beginning and just say, you know, what is a self-assessment? Self-assessments are carried out by people that want to understand a little bit more about what is it that they've got in terms of competency, knowledge, skills, behaviours, you know, what is it that their experiences um, are against a particular standard. So it's about doing that self-evaluation. So really self-assessment and the whole science around competency frameworks is about a study of your performance in order to be able to make some improvements. You may have come across, you know, the competency frameworks where people talk about it's about assessing your skills and then you'll find some gaps and then you can do some training to fill those gaps. That's the top line, but there's a lot more detail behind that and a lot more things for you to be thinking about. So a self-assessment is, yes, about trying to understand how well you're doing, how well you're actually performing in your current role. But it's going deeper than that to actually, well, how do I actually know that? Yeah. So how do I know that I'm doing OK? Um, and then, of course, there's that piece there about, well, how do I get better at what I'm doing? And it's that, that continuous circle, you know, that continuous professional development, you know, continual lifelong learning. Um, you know, if you're dedicated to a particular um, profession, which I hope you are in terms of PMO, this is why it's going to be really important to you. So why do people do them? Well, when we... I do a lot of these sessions through the House of PMO and we talk to people that are like you working within PMO. 
I've asked them to pull out, well, you know, what is the most important things to you about what, you know, why you're going to invest your time and energy in doing something like this? Nearly always it's the making improvements. It is that making continuous improvements. So people are, you know, wanting to know, yes, where my gaps are, but also not necessarily gaps, but trying to understand some of the subject areas deeper, better within PMO. One of the other ones, I suppose the second most important, is about confidence. I think one of the things that we find a lot within um, PMO is that people are um, unsure about where they may be standing in terms of wider PMO roles. How do I compare to other people? You know, how do I compare outside my organisation across the wider industry? Um, how do I know that I'm doing the right kind of job, but I'm, um, you know, I'm in the right kind of ballpark area for some of the stuff that I'm, I'm doing? It's sometimes it's because there's a um, there's not that many people that are working within PMO within your organisation. In fact, we have this this thing where you know there are a lot of PMOs that just consist of one or two people, um, and when you're in that kind of position, it's really hard to work out whether you know what you're doing is the you know the real true work of what PMO should be all about. I think once you do an assessment. It's always really good to, um, you might be surprised, that actually, you are probably better in some areas than you thought you were. Or actually, um, I feel like I don't know very much around certain subjects, but when you can do a self-assessment, actually, you might find that, you know, it's not the case. And all of these kind of things help us and gain us an, in confidence in order to be able to, um, you know, move on and move better uh, within our um, within our roles. One of the just a, a quick aside is that you know from a, an organisation's point of view. So I know we're talking very much about you today in terms of your own professional development, but it's also important from an organisation's point of view. So if you're listening to this in terms of um, you know maybe you're a PMO manager or a team of PMO people and looking to try and get that investment in you know I want to spend some time and energy um, with my staff in order to be able to you know to understand what their uh, development needs might be. From an organisation's point of view, the kind of business case for this is about, you know, is actually being able to understand um, the capability that already exists within the team. And if there's a clear cut way of being able to say, you know, our PMO is really strong in some areas, quite weak in some others, that means it's a, you know, a business need for either some improvement around some training or some hiring in of some certain certain staff. So being able to assess some kind of performance levels of the team are really useful, obviously, from a business point of view. They're also really useful for performance reviews, performance evaluation type stuff, because it gives people some real, you know, real insights, you know, but it's not just about gut feelings or being able to, you know, see what people are doing in their job. But a self-assessment, it brings another dimension to performance reviews that allow people to really pinpoint some of the areas that may need improvements. And of course, when it comes to set to setting those development goals, rather than just saying, you know, we're just going to do um, training across the board, across the PMO in certain areas, actually this allows us to do individual training plans and development goals and things like that for individuals within the PMO. So there's an individual reasons why people do it, but there's also an organisation's uh, approach as well. So just back to you then, what does this mean for you with a self-assessment? There's actually more ownership is placed on you as an individual to kind of take care, be interested, be infused about your own career, your own development and where you're going within your chosen profession. It is about being able to, you know, talk more to your managers about, you know, this is where I'm feeling like I've got some weaknesses. I'd really like to be able to address them. It is about you having more open conversation based on the outputs that you get from something like this. But the other thing is about this is that it does mean that you have to take time uh, and invest and it also means about being able to think deeply about the experience that you have. And that takes time and it takes reflection. And we're going to talk a little bit more detail about that reflection piece, because actually that is the, the big core part of it that actually takes most of the time. So um, in terms of the, uh, the PMO um, competency framework and the, the kind of investment from you, is that there is that commitment. So there's a commitment and interest in developing yourself plus using something like this assessment quite regularly. Because obviously, as you start to make improvements, you work on different components, you learn new things, your assessment changes over time. But it's about that 
you know, real interest in PMO. And this is what we find time and time again, is that the people that are really committed to learning, that are curious, that want to know more about certain aspects of the job, tend to overall do better, um, you know, in that role and also for their organisation. There is that piece that we'd always touched on, which is about that communication, because an assessment will open up conversations. If it's not just within the peers, the people that are within the project team, uh, within the PMO team, or talking about what it is that their assessments are saying, it also opens up conversations and different actions of your managers, you know, and wider within the organisation that it's a recognition that actually, you know, I can pinpoint exactly, you know, where I'm where I am against the standard um, and being able to, you know, have those better conversations with managers about, well, what can we do to address some of the things that need to happen in terms of development? It also means from, from your point of view that you have to give yourself time to be able to do something like this. If you are listening to this today, that tells me that you are interested in unlocking some of your potential through something like a self-assessment. So that's a good first start. It's a good, you know, for investment of time to be able to do an self-assessment. It means that you're going to be doing some prep, you're going to do the assessment, and then hopefully you're going to take some action afterwards. And then the bigger part of a self-assessment is that you, you think about it, it could be quite easy just to do a self-assessment and um, to take those results and away you go. But actually from an evidence point of view, it's whatever assessment you're going to take and whatever scoring you give yourself, you need that evidence in order to be able to back that up. Certainly when it comes to talking wider with your manager and using it in terms of development goals and part of your performance evaluations, that evidence piece does need to be there. And that's, again, it's it's not an easy thing to do. It takes time. And those are the kind of things that we're going to be talking about in this session a little further. OK, so for me. Um, PMO competency framework, that's what it's all about. So I just want to just talk a little bit about the connection between the competency framework and the actual qualifications, because we're here today, it's a house of PMO with APMG International. So there's obviously that qualification link. Um, and as you can see that from doing a self-assessment, it may open up gaps of which, you know, training is just one of the ways that you can start to close some gaps. So the PMO competency framework is actually one of the core texts for the four levels of qualifications that the House of PMO has, which are based on four different roles within the PMO. So we've got PMO administrators, PMO analysts, PMO managers and PMO directors. Now, the qualification for each one of those is based on the role profile that you find within a competency framework. Now, the way that a competency framework works in this respect in terms of PMOs is that you can do an assessment against a role that is most closely aligned to what it is that you do. So if you're working as a PMO administrator, there's an obvious piece there. It's a PMO administration role profile that you will do an assessment against. If you're working as a PMO analyst, it might be called a project coordinator. It could be called you know, lots of different kinds of names. But if you're essentially doing that that role within the PMO, where it's that, that broad role of supporting projects, programs, portfolios, that's the kind of role profile you will do an assessment against in terms of your um, competency. And again, with the managers and the directors. Now, how do the qualifications work is that the qualifications have been created to plug this gap of being able to help people perform and do the role that they're supposed to be doing. And it's called the essentials because it's the essential things that you need to know around key competence, knowledge, skills and behaviours in order to perform in that role. So it's a very practical, more kind of hands on Think, uh, way of thinking about your development around within a role. So talk a little bit more because what will become apparent is how those qualifications or well, why is the, the competency framework one of the core texts? Okay. So let's have a look at the competency framework in a little bit more detail. And we start with looking at the competencies. And let me explain a little bit more about those. So what you're seeing on screen right now are um three elements so far. I just want to go through these first before we reveal the fourth one. So within any role within PMO, we all have administration to do. Obviously, as a PMO administrator, you'll be doing lots of administration. However, 
doesn't matter if we're a PMO manager, a PMO director, a PMO analyst, we've all got administration as part of our roles. Yeah. So that could be administration that's related to a project or a program, a portfolio. It could be administration that is related to stuff we're doing within the PMO. It could be administration that we're doing on behalf of our organisations, you know, like getting involved in breakfast briefings and corporate briefings. There's all a lot of things that are, are based around administration. So that is a core element in terms of projects, programmes and portfolios in terms of being able to deal with that administrative side. So P3M is project programs and portfolios. So you talk right, you've got PMO management. So again, that competency you can imagine is going to be important for PMO managers and PMO directors. At the bottom left is P3M delivery support. So this is about the key competencies and the core areas that you will see when you are providing services and support around projects, programs, and portfolios. So a lot of those things that you're seeing there. Um, probably, you know, familiar, quite familiar with you. Some of them you may be doing more of, some of it less, some of them maybe not at all. And that's perfectly normal. But this is when a competency framework is for any PMO practitioner working in any organisation. So you can see that you have a broad number of competencies, but not necessarily will be everything that you are doing. OK, so we'll explain a little bit more about that later too. So those are the things that you're doing in supporting directly into projects, programs and portfolios. The final piece of the puzzle is this one, which is about enabling projects, programs and portfolios. Yeah, so P3M enabling. Now, these co competencies are all about, if you think about the role that the PMO is there to do, which is to support our organisations with projects and programs and portfolio delivery. Yeah, we're there to support that. And one of the things that we do as part of our support is provide the environment, the ecosystem of which these things are going to actually be able to run. So if you look down that list, you'll see that there has to be governance frameworks in place. Yeah. So you'll you have corporate governance, but we also have governance at that kind of project, program and portfolio level. And those frameworks need putting in place. And no one project, program or portfolio is going to do that. That's the a core PMO role in that we are the ones that set up these kind of things that any project program and portfolio has to adhere to. Same goes with the assurance processes that you put in place, the things that we put in there in terms of capability development. So that's all the things like workshops that we create, training packages for people but to help them get better at delivering. It can be things like um, building the intranet that has a lot of great guidance and guidelines and things like that on it. You can see their delivery methods. So that's about, you know, are we using a waterfall type methods? Are we using agile kind of like related things like Scrum? What is it that people are using to actually deliver? And again, these kind of standards, processes, procedures, templates, all of that kind of stuff needs to put in, in place for people to be able to use. So that's the enabling piece. Yeah, We enable project programs and portfolios to be able to run efficiently and effectively and hopefully successfully, okay? So that's the core competencies that we need to be working with when we're working in a PMO role, okay? That's the first element, competencies, because competencies are not the whole thing. We also have to have certain knowledge in order to be able to perform those competencies, to do that competency well. So what you're looking at on the screen here is just a is the section from the competency framework that's been put together that is looking at what the core knowledge areas are. OK, now you've got to remember with this um, competency framework that it says on the front about it being created by professionals for professionals. In other words, it's been created by PMO practitioners across the globe. It's a three year project to put it together. So it has really been tried and tested by people that are working in this space. And so the knowledge areas, as you can see here, you know, are, are quite varied. It can range from having knowledge of certain applications and tools within the organisation that you need to be able to use in order to be able to, you know, to perform that PMO role. There's always going to be internal systems that we have to use. There's obviously things like P3M and PMO theories and things that we will be using within our day to day work. There's a lot of corporate related things that we have to link in with project delivery. Um, and one of the most frequent and probably most 
often overlooked areas and knowledge that really do make us good PMO people is knowing who to contact and for what. <laughs> and so again, this is about you know the knowledge of who we're working with and who's doing what and across departments, across the business. And again, we you know we're a connected and um, function that yes, we're working in projects and programs and portfolios, but we know we have got you know connections to that wider organization in which we're working. So again, there's knowledge pieces here. And what happens in the competency framework? is that you will get a, a certain proportion of these knowledge, what you're seeing on screen right now. You will get a reduced amount of them specific to a, a role. Because what we've done is actually looked at, well, what are the core knowledges, you know, knowledge pieces required for certain roles? So, for example, as a PMO administrator, it's less likely that you need to understand some of the things like the business corporate strategy and business strategy and things like that. However, for a PMO manager, and PMO director, it's going to be one of the core knowledge pieces that you need to know. So again, and we'll show you how those um, those knowledge areas um, reduce in order for the role that you're performing. Alongside knowledge is skills. And of course, skills, there can be lots and lots of different skills that we're using every time we do a piece of work within the PMO. You know, to take, for example, if we're going to do reporting and analysis and insights, we're using a lot of different skills there, which is more than just analysis. Yeah. So, again, there's a big, long list there, but it's the same principle applies that for each role, there will be some of these skills more important than others. So what we do is get you to assess against which are deemed to be the core ones for those particular roles. So again, there's stuff there to, you know, quite a few of them there, but you'll see a reduced amount depending on the role that you're performing. And then finally, and part of the last of the four elements is behaviours. Now, the behaviours is a, you know, is a really interesting one and often overlooked because we focus very much in project management about technical skill all the time. Yeah, it's all about how we, you know, are doing the job. I just like, you know, we're we using spreadsheets, dashboards, you know, templates, all of this kind of stuff. And actually, you know, one of the core things that elevators in terms of, you know, being a good professional is actually more of a kind of behavioral stuff. You could be one of the best um, PMO uh, professionals in putting together really insightful dashboards, great visualizations, a lot of information that's been collected and, you know, from, from data. But if you are not able to convey what that dashboard and those insights are telling somebody in order for them to make a decision, there's something wrong there in terms of that whole competence. Yeah. So you can see how behaviors can really make a difference between actually whether we're really truly competent in an area or not. Yeah. So those are the four elements, the main four elements. But I'm going to talk to you more about more fours. Okay. So PMO competency framework, if you imagine PMOs are so complex, yeah. So if you're going to do a project manager competency framework assessment, that's a project manager that's used to delivering projects. His competence, his or her competency framework is very much focused on project delivery, and that's it. Whereas within PMO, we're often working in different contexts. We don't just work in projects. We don't just work in programs or portfolios. And then we've got this fourth one there, which is the centre of excellence. And that's the one where it's all about where the standards are sitting, you know, where they, you put in the things in place, like the tools, the templates, the processes, all of that kind of enabling type work. But what is really happening in the real world is that often when we're working in PMO, we can be working in different contexts at the same time. So actually, if you're working as a project administrator and you're working purely on a project, that's pretty straightforward when you do an assessment. You'll do an assessment against the project context, against that PMO administrator role. Actually, when I talk to people, I'll say, well, actually, I do a bit of project, a bit of program and a bit of centre of excellence, in which case you're going to be choosing different contexts in which to do your assessment again. So it's really interesting when you start to look at a PMO based competency framework versus those that are kind of singular roles like a peer, you know, like a project manager. Now, the other thing that you're seeing there, again, and never number four, is about something called proficiency levels. Now, what you've got there is about, if you think about a one of the core competency areas, say we look at uh, reporting again, 
you're going to have different proficiency levels within that one competency. Yeah. So this is where we start to do an assessment to go at what kind of leveling that we're at. And in the PMO competency framework, there's four levels, which are foundation, intermediate, advanced and expert. And what you see within these levels are, and those bullet points underneath it, those bullet points are called indicators. Now, indicators are literally just descriptions that give you an idea about what kind of things you would be doing at that level. OK, so it gives you an idea about where you might want to score yourself based on looking through those indicators and saying, yeah, I think I'm probably more at that kind of intermediate level rather than advanced because. Yeah, so it gives you some kind of real you know, examples to distinguish between those kind of levels. OK, again, we're going to bring it all back together again. Let's just go back to those road profiles again, because we've talked about those quite a lot so far. So within the competency framework, there are four of them, and we know that they align to the qualifications as well. What you get within a role profile is key, is the key knowledge, is the key competencies, it's the key responsibility. It is about these key things that make you competent. Yeah, They don't make you out of this world amazing, wonderful expert these are the things that mean that you are competent to do the role okay that's why the qualifications are called the essentials those courses are aimed at people that are either coming into those roles or have been in those roles for maybe two three years and are wanting to get you know a really good grounding because they've not had some kind of formal training before if you've been doing the role as a PMO manager, PMO analyst for a number of years, these are probably not the things for you. But re role profiles are what you do assessment against. But the role profiles are in the book. And one of the things, again, with these role profiles have been really helpful for people within their organisation to say, look, this is what a PMO analyst does. This has been set by professional body, house of PMO. They know their stuff. This is the role that we would be doing within a organisation. And actually, they're using it as a way with working with HR to be able to bring up some of their job descriptions and um, up, to, up to date and a bit more, um, actually a bit more truthful to what it is that they're actually doing. So it's been really good in that respect as well. So how does a PMO self-assessment work for you? Well, there's a number of things. So we're going to do a self-assessment against the standard. And we talked about the standard and the standards list. It will allow you to identify some skills gaps and it will also help perhaps to help you choose how to close some of those identified gaps because the competency framework does give you a little bit more insight into what it is that you should be doing within some of those competency areas. It will allow you to do a benchmark. Yeah. So here's a standard. Here's the levels that have been um, indicated for a PMO manager, for example. These are the level that you should be at. Thinking back to our indicators and our proficiency levels, I'll be able to show you that for each role, what's been set is that you should be at this level. So, for example, in reporting and insights and analysis, for a PMO analyst, you should really be at that intermediate advanced level. Yeah. Again, I'm going to show you in an example exactly how that is done. You'll also be able to find out what you need if you want to be moving up to currently administrate, wanting to be an analyst, analyst wanting to be a manager. You're able to do a self-assessment actually based on PMO manager, even though you're at the analyst level. It all really will show you the gaps and things that you perhaps want to think about over the next few years as you can prepare yourself to make that move. It will also help you to learn what competent looks like. And I think for lots of PMO people, that's just a refreshing thing to be able to do because it's never been able to be done before. You'll also be able to see in there there's a lot of common language and terms that get used, which are really useful for anybody, really, who's working in this space. And again, if you're quite new to PMO, that's particularly useful. We've already talked about it being able to be used for performance review. And actually, you can use it in order to be able to negotiate your salary increase and actually really useful to be able to write your CV or your resume. When it comes to things like looking for a job, um, it's actually a really useful um, document 
book to use because it actually helps you to think about how to put your CV together. I think one of the things that we often forget about is our experiences. So you could be working in a role for like five, six years before you have to write your CV because you're looking for a new role. How do you remember some of the core things that you've been doing? And actually, it's a really good, um, really good book to help you in terms of refreshing. Like, ah, yes, of course, I've done some of this stuff before. Um, I need to make sure that I get that in my CV so people are aware of that as well. So it's got different uses. OK, so let's have a quick look at what a outcome is of a self-assessment and this is a really simple one because i just want to make it you know this is really easy for you to understand <clears throat> so this is a pmo manager role okay <clears throat> and they are doing a self-assessment exists against one context and you can see that up there it says portfolio top left corner now what a self-assessment does <clears throat> it gives you a cut down version of all the core competencies that are required at that role OK. So even though we've seen a lot of the competencies listed out and there's a lot of them in those four boxes, actually for a PMO manager working at a portfolio level, there's a cut down version. So you can see there that for P3M delivery support, which we had all of those long lists, actually, you can just do a assessment against the entirety of all of those. And we call it this collectively P3M delivery support. You can see obviously PMO management there at the nine o'clock <laughs> and then some of the um, enabling competencies, uh, you know, where a lot of PMO managers will be spending a lot of their time. So what you're seeing here is that the black line there is what's been set as the standard of we really should be in place if you're working as a PMO manager at that portfolio level. So what you're seeing here is what's been set within the competency framework. OK, so for a PMO manager working at a portfolio level around the assurance side, they ideally should be working at a more advanced level. But you can see with this particular person, so we're looking at the 12 o'clock line now. You can see for this particular person that actually they're only itching at the intermediate level. There's some knowledge gap there potentially that needs looking at. So you can see with this particular person, there are two areas in which there might be some gaps that need looking at. And that's right. There's assurance at 12 o'clock and there's the capacity management at three o'clock. OK, so that's what assessment at a really top level is going to be able to show you. And just for completeness, with the self-assessment, you can also use the, um, the tool from the House of PMO, which is actually a membership benefit. It's a you can do your self-assessment using the book. Yeah, so it's a very much a paper exercise. Or if you use an online tool, you're obviously going to get a lot more insight. But this particular one is for um, corporate members. So corporate members, obviously, have got a team of PMO people with a manager. And they are able to do a team view. So again, I've kept it simple with this particular um, slide. This is a couple of PMO analysts that are working within the portfolio level PMO. And what this is showing you, you can see straight away how their competency is a little bit more broader. So all those P3M delivery support ones have been extracted out. Yeah, because it's for PMO analysts, it's really important to get down to a more granular detail in terms of some of those delivery support areas. Less so for a PMO manager because they're not down in the detail anymore. That's what the PMO analysts are doing. So they've got some P3M delivery support stuff in there. And they've also got some of that um, P3M enabling things as well. So they've got quite a lot of competencies that they're scoring themselves again. And again, there's a competency requirement level for this. Um, and then you can see where their particular scoring is coming in. Now, if you imagine that extrapolated up, so say there's 10 people within the team and it's a PMO team that is providing services across the organisation, you're going to see pretty quickly as a manager where some of your core strengths are, where some of your weaknesses are. And those are the things that are really interesting at the PMO manager director level, because you need to know where your capability is within the PMO, because you are offering services to your organisation. Now, if you're offering organisation, um, you know, uh, services around financial management and this example, you can see that it's woefully lacking. OK, 
Now, that might be fine because actually within this particular PMO, we don't get involved on the financial management side because that's the setup. In their organisation, that is how it works. We don't have specialist finance stuff within PMO. That is done by the finance department who have got some specialised project people within the finance function. OK, that's how it can sometimes work. So in this case, we can ignore that weakness because actually it's not something that this team are doing anyway. Yeah, so there's a little bit more things behind it, but it allows us to at least have something that we can start to visualise and see. So what we've just gone through, and I'm going to do some of the key points again. You can do a self-assessment against any of these four roles. If you want to, you can do it against all of them. Yeah, but it is about being able to, when you first do a self-assessment, do something that feels manageable and understandable, which is why you can do it against a role program. You can also do a self-assessment against a particular context. So if you are a PMO analyst that is working at a project and program level, you can do your self-assessment against a project and program context. Yeah. You can do it against all of them if again, if you want to. Yeah. So you have that option. Within the self-assessment, and certainly the one that you can do in the tool, it allows you to do that current self-assessment, which you can do in the book. But if the tool also allows you to set some career levels that you might want to be you know, more aspirational or your next step. Yeah. And it allows you to do the self-assessment based on where you are today. Stick a button and it'll show you where your gaps are against some particular roles that you are thinking about trying to get into in the future. Again, I'm going to show you a real example of the tool that it will become a little clearer. We've talked about indicators and proficiency levels, you know, so we're going to show you in a little bit more detail some of those um, different proficiency levels and indicators that are for some of the core competencies, just so you can get a better feel for that. We've talked about knowledge, skills and behaviours. And with that in the competency framework, there is no level of proficiency. So, for example, in analysis, we do not ask people to score themselves around foundation intermediate, advanced and expert. We couldn't do that because it's the vastness of that competency framework. It's about being able to ideally do assessment against the core PMO competencies, whereas actually some of the skills behaviours are very, you know, very common. So with that, it is very much about doing a yes or no, but you have those kind of skills or you don't. Yeah. So again, this is about being able to truthfully answer an assessment because you really do want to get out with proper information that shows you where some of your core areas are. So if, for example, you know, you look at some of the um, skills around influencing others, actually, you know you can do a little bit of it, but you're not particularly great. You would probably leave that as a no um, because you then know that you've got some areas to um, to look into. And then finally, we talked about all of this requires having some evidential um, backup for what it is that you're scoring yourself as. So from a self-assessment, there are four steps. Select, reflect, assess and evidence. Yeah? So this is about selecting that real profile to get you going. It's about being able to take some time to reflect and to think about your experiences in order to do some really good scoring. Setting some side of time to actually do the assessment, and you'll be surprised at how quickly you can do that if you've done a lot of reflection. And then there's a, a piece of work there about being able to evidence it, which again can take time. So those are the steps that you're taking when it comes to doing an assessment. So where should you put most of the energy? So for most of your energy should be around reflection. And this is something that not many of us do, and don't. And if we do, perhaps not to the level that we perhaps maybe should be. If we look at the different kinds of um, professions that are out there that include reflection as part of their continuing professional development, yeah, this is something that's kind of inbuilt into their professionalization. Um, for example, if you look at nursing, they in build in reflection as very much part of daily, weekly activities. And it is all about thinking about the experiences that we have more deeply. So what I wanted to do, just as a little side note, it has a link in with the um, PMO competency framework. I think it's just nice sometimes just to have a think about, well, what do we mean by yeah, I want you to reflect? 
this is a um, ref integrated reflective cycle. And the reason why I like this, and there's a few out there, the reason why I like this specifically for PMO people is that stage three, which is actually about bringing in some theory, which for me means bringing in some learning, bringing in some resources, actually using something to help you get better at what it is you do. So it's very straightforward that you've got the experience and it's about being able to reflect on can you describe what happened and then can you start to think and identify what went well, what could you improve, your thoughts and feelings about what happened, you know, making the assumptions, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, so it's really, really thinking about the piece of experience that you've got. And then there's that theoretical bit, which is like, actually, in order to be able to do better next time, I think I need to know about X or Y. Yeah. And then there's that final bit about being able to use that and then into preparation for the next time that you're doing that particular task or activity. So pretty straightforward, yeah. Let me bring that into a competency framework um, example, just so we can give a little bit more um, context. So we have got here it is the administration um, competence. And you can see it's in a portfolio context. And the one that I want to focus on is this one here around facilitating portfolio level workshops. OK, so in order to be able to really think about this. So this is not necessarily whether I've got my competence or not. This is actually just, just talking generally about reflection and how it might really work certainly for PMO people. So what we're going to look at then is I have just facilitated a portfolio management workshop and this is kind of reflection piece that I want to do, which is, I think it went really well. However, there's a, a, a bit within it where I really feel like I was starting to lose people or actually I did lose some of the people during that workshop. They were going off chatting or they were going off and they were having a bit of a disagreement and actually trying to get them back into, into the group. There's some reflection piece goes on there. And we're going to think of really reflection on the actions that I took and all of those kind of things. And then actually the theoretical bit is like, OK, so I know that there's probably some techniques or approaches out there that are going to help me in order to be able to bring people back when things like that go wrong. Because it will happen in every kind of workshop and there'll be some bright spark out there that's got a lot of in insight that I could probably learn from. I'm going to go out and I'm going to find that. And then actually for my preparation for next time is I'm going to add in a different exercise that is going to help me bring people back together. You know, so it's, I'd be able to pull this out if I feel that things are going a little bit off track. So, again, reflection is a big part of what we should be doing. If you want to call ourselves a PMO professional, these are just some of the things that professionals actually do. And we know that when we're going to do a self-assessment, we've got to really think hard and reflect on what it is that we've already got and what we've done in order to be able to um, do an assessment against it. So what I want to do now is, do you want to have a go? Do you want to have a look at the, the we're going to use the online tool version just so you can have a peek at um, what it actually looks like. And it's perhaps not as daunting as you might think, but it's always good to, to learn and to understand, isn't it? So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the tool. OK, so I'm going to quickly move on to a... Uh, and you should be able to see on screen now, this is the um, the tool. So when you first come onto the tool, um, you get a little idea of, you know, what exactly what it is you need to be doing and where to start. This is somebody called Geraldine. And let's have a look at Geraldine. OK, so at the moment, Geraldine is a PMO administrator. Yeah, so she's that's the self-assessment that she's done. She's working at that administration role and she's specifically working in a project-based context. So in order to get that spider diagram that we saw before, this is the, the front end of that. So basically, this is what she's got to be able to do assessment against. Let's look at the one of the easiest ones in terms of understanding, because I think we've all got administration. So I've gone for one of the... Um, the lowest roles within PMO, just so we, we all know, regardless of what level you're working at, hopefully you'll be able to understand exactly what you're seeing here on screen. So we can see here, this is the top level the administration, that she's self-assessment level. She's already assessed herself at advanced level. That's very good. So 
let's have a look in detail then. We've just seen the portfolio one. This is the P3M administration one at a project level. Now, what you're looking at here right now is a description of what we mean by administration. So you've got that. And then we've got these proficiency levels, the four. And within the proficiency levels, we've got what we call these bullet points for indicators. And if you remember what we said about indicators is that they these are examples of what the kind of things you would be doing that say that you'd be working at that kind of level, that, that proficiency level. Now, you've got to recognise that there is not everything here that you could possibly imagine because the list would be huge. But what you're seeing here is a, a pretty good example of what's required. And you may have something slightly different within your organisation, but you should get the general idea in terms of look at some of those first words. Yeah. So we look at foundational level, it's provide, it's contribute, it's maintain, intermediate, you're managing, you're serving, you're, you know. So sometimes when it gives you the idea about where it's going up in proficiency levels, you know, in terms of providing some base level support versus going right up to expert. There is no expert at the, on, at the administration side, but you can see there the similarities to the one that you saw at the portfolio level, but actually here it's about very much at the project level. So Geraldine, we know she scored herself at advanced, so she, she's here, which is really, really interesting. But let's go and have a look at something that's flagging here, which is the experience, okay? And we said that this is the kind of thing that can take some time. So from an experience point of view, what Geraldine's written there is just, she's completed the onboarding process for all the new hires in the last 12 months. So she's working very much at a project context, probably a big project, a lot of people coming and going in terms of being in the project team. She's probably doing a lot of onboarding. So what we mean by that is that people that come onto the project need briefing, we need all their equipment and all of that kind of good stuff. So she's put a project in place for all the new hires that they've had. Might have been a really busy period. What you're seeing underneath there is a comment from her manager. So there she's provided some evidence, but she's also uploaded a document that completes that kind of circle. But I've done that onboarding process and here it is. Really simple. There's lots of different ways to evidence, you know, but again, that's a session for another day. But you can see from Geraldine's point of view that she has doing, you know, these competences and doing some scoring against them. You can see the reduction in the number of knowledge things that there are, reduction in the number of skills. Remember that big list. These are what are considered to be the core knowledge, skills and behaviours. That's why there's that cut down list. And again, it's just about doing the yes and the no. So again, for this one, from an administrator level, you're only doing some competency scoring. So actually at this level, do your administration but actually you can do at least two of these from this list. Let's just pick one of the other ones just so you can see the difference. So here's the reporting one. So a lot more detail here in terms of a description. We've got those uh, proficiency levels and we've got some indicators. And again, look at the language differences between them. Look at what it is that they're actually putting down in terms of bullet points as to what would be expected for that PMO administrator within this competency of reporting insights and analysis. Yeah. So you can see on this one, she's only doing it at foundation level. But actually, that's all that's required. Yeah? So these job level requirements, and I'll shut this down again, these job level requirements have been set within the competency framework, you know, saying that we think that this is the kind of level that you should be at. So it's an interesting bit in terms of getting started. But what about if Geraldine is looking at the PMO administrator role, analyst role, sorry, we make a quick jump, look at how it changes. Look at all of the different things that are coming up now. Look at the differences in some of the skills and things, yeah? So there's new things that are appearing because it's a different role, it's different requirements. And again, you're doing different scoring. So what it's doing is holding the scoring she's done as a PMO administrator. We've changed the context in the system. And actually now she can see where she's got some work to do if she wants to go for that promotion as a PMO analyst. Yeah. So she's got some great insights here to be able to talk to her manager about potentially taking that next step. And then you can go even further and look at the PMO manager one and how much that changes yet again.
Yeah. So that's how an assessment is done. And it is about being able to, you know, do the um, do the assessment to get the insights for yourself, but also to help you have conversations with your managers. It is about trying to take control of your career and where you think it needs to be going versus where your organisation needs it to be going and come into some common ground about, well, I think we need to be doing X. I need to be looking at this. What do you think about this? I've been doing this. How can I get to the next level? All of those really insightful conversations. And then finally, if you look at the portfolio tab, what it then allows us to do is start to look at some of the insights. Yeah. So it starts to give us a, a little bit more pictorial stuff about some of the things that she's doing. So again, here, smaller spider diagram because she's the PMO administrator, and that's how it's looking against that. So again, against the knowledge, it's giving us some, some pictures. Again, from a PMO analyst point of view, we can see, you know, we've got some gaps and things that you might want to look at in terms of the analyst levels. So again, it's just insight, interesting insights that before this point, before this was available, you know, we wouldn't have that kind of ability to be able to do that. OK, so if we go back to um, our final um Final look, um, we've talked about the different competencies. We've looked at um, the different knowledge, skills and behaviours. We've got some really interesting insights in terms of thinking about how do we reflect on our experience, all of that kind of good stuff. Just to finish off, just thinking about those gaps and to close the loop today is about those qualifications yet again. So PMO competency framework is one of the core texts. There's actually three of them. But the competency framework is used in terms of these qualifications because it almost sets the syllabus. If you look at the row profiles for each one of them, for each of the roles and responsibilities, the core knowledge, skills, behavior and competencies, they are covered in those courses. Those courses have been there to plug the PMO gap because there's nothing out there that actually focuses on if I need to start or want to get into a PMO manager role, I'm an analyst now, I need some help to be able to get there. How can I get there? These are the courses for you. Okay. Now you can have a look at these courses on the House of PMO website. You can certainly visit APMG and have a look at the each one of those courses and a syllabus and a downloadable guide and all of that kind of good stuff that you'll be able to use in order to be able to be planning your next um, moves in, in your PMO. So from my point of view, it's been really great to be here today talking to you about self-assessment. I hope you've got some really great insights from it. And uh, I, if you'd like any more information, please do get in touch with APMG International or get in touch with us at the House of PMO. And if you're listening to this and you really like the, some of the stuff that we've been sharing with you today, Take a look at the House of PM on LinkedIn as well. We've got a LinkedIn group there, a vibrant LinkedIn group where we're always sharing different things around PMO and different PMO topics. And just check out some of the things that are coming up. From a House of PMO membership point of view, you get access to a large library of learning as well as access to different events, conferences and so on. So if you're really into your PMO, um, make sure you check it out. But that's it for today. Thanks very much and we'll catch you soon. Bye. Yeah, thank you so much, Lindsay. Some great stuff there. Um, I'm really interested to see how the um, how this is such a great tool uh, for PMO professionals to um, to really identify their strengths and weaknesses and contribute there to their ongoing professional development. So, really great stuff, and no doubt you've inspired a few people to go take a look, which is which is great. Um, so, I, I, I believe we've um, we've addressed most of the questions that I could see uh, through the chat and through the Q and A function. Uh, Lindsay, you've done a great job there. So, thanks for that. Um, and we are getting close to our uh, allotted time for the webinar, so so we will start to wrap it up there. Um, you'll see there's a few links on screen, um, but don't worry if you're frantically trying to write down those links. We will include those in the follow-up email that I mentioned at this, the start of the session. So uh, do look out for that over the next couple of days. We'll include links to, to all the, the relevant information in that. Um, so that just leaves me to thank everyone for attending. Thank you, Lindsay, for your uh, insight and expertise today. Really great stuff. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. Uh, and we hope to see you again on uh, APMG webinars in the future. Uh, so thanks again, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day and the weekend ahead. Thanks again. Bye.